Let's talk about fun. In a now famous quote by ex-president of Nintendo America, Reggie fils he said, If, if it's, it's not, not fun, fun why, why bother? bother? While this quote has turned into a, somewhat of a meme online in some communities, a lot of people resonate with the statement presented by Reggie. Games are meant to be fun first more than anything. While I do believe there is room for debate for some specific games, for the vast majority of games, being fun is the main goal that they should always strive towards. Now, when I ask you what fighting games are, there's a chance you'll come up with several different answers. Hard, frustrating, cool, competitive, Degenerate. And some of you, of course, will say that fighting games are fun. But for people outside of the fighting game community, they tend to find that fighting games aren't exactly the most fun genre to play. Hell, a lot of newer players have trouble getting into the games at all to begin with, while saying that they're too much work and they're just not fun for them. But why is that? Is it because that fighting games are terrible at putting their best foot forward for new players and end up throwing them into a competitively driven community with no way for them to get their bearings? Yes, but there's something more that I believe fighting games fail to do. They fail to show new players the fun. I do genuinely believe with all of my heart that fighting games are one of the most fun and satisfying genres of video games out there. For the longest times, I was someone who watched from the sidelines looking in, wishing I could do the cool things that I saw players doing online. Hell, I just wanted to be able to beat the hard CPU and bosses in the games, but... Over time, I would slowly learn how to play and love these games. And most importantly, I found what makes these games fun for me. Now, I am going to have to add a bit of a disclaimer to this video. There are multiple different ways that finding games can be enjoyed, and the way that I enjoy these games won't exactly mirror the fun that you find in these games, and that's okay. In fact, that's part of the beauty of all of this. This isn't going to be a concrete guide on what makes these games fun. Think of it as tips and tools that you can use to find your own fun in the genre. So how did I learn to love these games? Well, the first one is something that can be applied to basically anything in life. I learned to find joy in learning new things and improving. Allow me, if you will, to go on a little bit of a tangent. When I was 17 years old, I was just finishing college. This is high school for you Americans in the audience. And I was looking for universities that I could apply to. I went to several different ones, ranging in prestige, until I eventually landed up at a very fancy and highly prestigious university. It was way out of my league at the time, but you have to dream big, right? I went through the corridors in the department that I would hopefully be learning things in until I eventually bumped into one of the professors. The professor then proceeded to give me a lecture on the course I would be applying for, which lasted for what felt like a whole hour. I don't remember everything he said, but there was one nugget of information he left me with that I still apply to everything in my life to this day. You should never study because you have a test. You should study because you're interested in the subject. To say it another way, basically, if you study for a test, you'll eventually get bored out of your mind because you don't care about what you're studying for. And once the test is over, you'll probably forget about it all in a couple of years. However, if you study a topic because you're interested in it and want to learn more, not only do you retain more information, but you're going to have a better time studying, leading to just a better overall experience. But what does any of this have to do with fighting games? Well, that's simple. When first trying finding games, you should learn how to do things that you think look cool and look fun, over learning how to do all of the basic stuff to begin with. Normally for competitive folk, this advice sounds like a surefire way to get your ass kicked. But remember, we're not focusing on being good, we're focusing on having fun. You think the Daigo Parry is cool and want to do it yourself? Go for it. You want to learn how to do the Giovanna Slingshot combo because it activates your neurons? Learn it. You just want to learn how to consistently do bread and butter combos? That's great too. Go for that. You need to find the things in these games that call to you the most and focus on learning them first before you learn anything else. Not only will you have something cool to show people, but you'll be more invested in the learning process as you're working towards something that you want to actually do. Obviously, there is a certain amount of the basics that you need to learn before you can do the cool stuff. But there's a way to make that easier too. Other people. I feel that it's pretty common knowledge now that learning things in a group makes the process easier and just more fun for everyone involved. If you try to learn fighting games in a session where you and your buddies hang out and hit buttons, it'll make it feel less like you're actually learning something and that you're just having a good time with your friends. You probably won't even notice yourself improving. And that's the other big thing with fighting games. You have to take pride in knowing that you've improved. It's hard to notice that you're improving a lot of the time. And quite often, it can feel like you're in a rut and you're not able to do anything better. But that's okay. 
It's part of the process. After every session in your head, go back and think of the things that you were doing well when compared to what you were doing before. Maybe it's the fact that you landed that combo that you've been working on. Maybe you landed things that you've been practicing for over a week in a match, finally. Maybe your neutral is clean up. Whatever you do, don't think about how much you won or how much you lost. Very common for people to see the fact that they lost and think, I didn't do anything good, or to see that they won and go, well, I won, so I don't need to think about it. When there could be absolutely massive gaping flaws in their game plan that they can still improve on despite winning. Outside the realms of competition, the result of the match does not mean anything, and disconnecting yourself from it will make you feel much better. Trust me. Alongside this, another big thing you should do is just completely ignore ranked points. Ranked is a tool that is meant to put you against people of equal-ish skill, so that you can have a proper a match where neither of you get absolutely stopped. While this isn't always the case, ranked in basically any game always ends up being the antithesis of fun, as people begin to focus on the number or the badge next to their name, and either boast about it or see it as an embarrassment. This doesn't just go for fighting games either. Every game that has a rank system has the problem, especially at low levels. Though I don't like to admit it, there was a portion of my life where I really enjoyed playing League of Legends. However, the idea that I wasn't good at the game was something that genuinely upset me. I had people on the internet and even friends in real life tell me that if I was below gold, platinum, diamond, or even master rank, that I wasn't good at the game and my opinions on the game didn't matter. They said that I was going to be stuck at that rank forever and I would never be good. This really got to me and it made me upset. I would yell at my friends and teammates in casual games because I thought they were holding me back and the game stopped being fun. Eventually, I quit the game after seeing what it was turning me into. After trying to get back into it with a different friend group, the game literally made me have a meltdown in a call because I felt like I had no control over anything, and I quickly uninstalled it again. For some folks, the competitive badge and prestige that they get from these games is a sense of pride, but for a lot of people, it can be the opposite. If you relate to my story at all, then please take my advice and just ignore the rank system in these games. Finding games are beautiful in the fact that you can improve by simply playing casually against other players, and you'll find that you have much more fun when you're not worrying about a number going up or down every time that you win or lose. The losses will sting, but that just means that you're able to find more things to improve on and learn. Not not to mention, losing can build up motivation and give you something to strive towards. Lose enough to one person, and you may see them as a rival or a boss to take down. And then, you can set yourself challenges. One of the best aspects of fighting games is just how personal they are. Since these games are primarily one-on-one, -on -one, it's very easy for people to show off their personality in the way that they play and how they act. It's also very easy to form bonds in these games when compared to other games. Now, obviously, they're not as strong as something like an MMO, but if you're playing online, it's not uncommon for you to run into the same person over and over again the more that you play. Eventually, you might even become friends with these people if the game allows you to talk to each other. And if you're already playing with friends, that's even better, because you'll be able to strengthen your bond with these people through playing and improving. But there's a good chance that at some point, you'll run into someone that you just can't beat. Someone who's better than you in such a way that it feels like you can't even land a hit. You blink and the next thing you know, the words you lose have been plastered on the screen right before your eyes. What you found is a reason to improve and get stronger. Trust me when I say that the person who's beating your ass over and over again is in fact mortal and can be beaten. You just need to figure out what you need to do in order to do that. For some people, the idea of beating someone strong will be enough of a driving force to learn more complex and hard things about these games so that they have more tricks to pull out against other players. However, some players aren't exactly driven by revenge fantasies. So what do you do if you want to get the same kick as these guys? Well, you can find your own challenges to conquer and have that be your motivation. Maybe there's a combo that you've been begging to learn and want to not only learn it, but try it out in a real match. Maybe you want to land a cool mix-up consistently, as you only land it a certain amount of the time. Maybe there's a tournament that you can enter and you want to get a specific placing, or maybe there's an item in the game that you have to grind for because it looks cool. By giving yourself clear and defined goals that don't directly have to do with winning, you will inevitably fall back into the loop of looking for new things to try out, learning them, and feeling good because you've improved over time. It's like a real example. For those of you who don't follow this channel actively, my main game is Guilty Gear Strive. 
it is currently the most played fighting game I have on my Steam account and is the only fighting game that I actively compete in. I currently play the character Biken basically exclusively. And one day I wanted to learn what I could do after connecting a fro. After doing a bit of research, I found out that Biken can actually get an unseeable 50-50 from her normal fro with both versions being safe on block. After trying it out in training mode for a couple of days, I slowly began using it in real matches, until, eventually, it became my go-to solution after throwing someone. After realizing that I was doing it consistently in real matches, I felt proud of myself and began to search out more techniques that I could use. Not to mention, I actually began to win more matches because I learned this technique. And the reason I learned this is because I've set goals for Strive, which I'm still trying to achieve. If you'd like to see this journey in action, I have a video series that's called Getting Good at Guilty Gear Strive. I also stream part of the challenges on Monday on my Twitch if you'd like to see them live. I'll also be streaming after this video goes live, so come say hi. Now, granted, this is all from a competitive perspective, and you shouldn't have to look at these games through a competitive mindset if you don't want to. It's important for you to think of challenges that will actually engage you and allow them to form naturally instead of forcing you. If you force a challenge upon yourself, it can lead to you having an unhealthy mindset and resenting your past decision. If the challenge is too frustrating, you shouldn't force yourself to do it. That'll just force you into burnout. Take a rest and maybe try something different. Variety is the spice of life, as they say, and fighting games absolutely have a large amount of variety that they're able to give you. Character select screen alone in these games is able to give you a bunch of different experiences in any game. If you're feeling yourself getting bored or annoyed playing with something, why not pick up a different character and try to learn them for a bit? Not only will this help you explore the different options at your disposal, it might even open your eyes to things that you might like in fighting games. Maybe you like playing slower characters who could take a hit. Maybe you like putting people in the blender and turning them into a fine paste. Or maybe you just don't like your opponent getting to play the game. By changing who you play for a bit, you'll not only be able to learn more about the game, but you'll understand yourself more as a fighting game player. You can apply this to more than just character select. Most fighting games have silly modes that you can play to break up the monotony. In Dragon Ball Fighters, for example, you can play a 3v3 mode with your friends. You can play in teams of all of the same character, or you and two of your buddies can team up to fight an extremely hard boss battle together in order to earn some in-game currency. Hell, Axis games give you a bunch of things that you can actually do. Go fishing, decorate your room, dance around the plaza. Things that are still in the game, but aren't exactly fighting. I will admit, though, this is where fighting games are actually the weakest. In a lot of other games, if you're bored of the main thing that the game does, there's generally something else you can do. Something that's technically related to the game, but it's just far away enough that it doesn't matter too much. Games tend to do this in many different ways, and some games do it much better than others, but really successful games tend to have things that I like to call distraction game modes. The key player is playing while not having much to do with the main game. Finding games don't exactly need these, but they're a good way to keep you engaged with the game while giving you something else to do. Street Fighter 6 looks like it's going to have this in abundance, but for any other fighting games, I hope you like character customization. But even then, there's more you can do to mix it up. If you fight with the same group of people over and over again, try branching out and fighting more people. Join a community discord, join a tournament, hell, queue in casual or rank mode if you don't normally. Just ignore the numbers, please. Being able to face other players will give you a nice breath of fresh air when you play these games. I'm lucky that I have the privilege to be able to fight a wide variety of players in different skill levels at any given time, and I know for a fact that facing views on my streams and people in Discord has helped me keep playing these games for longer than I normally would have. So to everyone who I've ever fought, thank you. But eventually, no matter how much you spice it up, you're going to need to do something that you generally do with every game. You need to make sure that you take a break. Fighting games are intense. They always have been, and they always will be. There's only so much you can learn and improve upon before you inevitably stop feeling the dopamine rush that you felt when you started learning them. Like every competitive game, if you want to keep that fire burning, you need to take a break. Now, if you manage to find the fun and want to keep going, by all means, please do. But once you stop feeling all of those positive emotions, the negativity starts to turn over. It's probably best to go and do something else for a while. 
This could be something simple as trying a different fighting game that you see and think is cool, but if you truly want to recharge, it's best to go and do something completely different for a while. Your brain can only take so much of anything before it inevitably needs to recharge, and by trying a different hobby for a while, you'll slowly rebuild that energy that you had in the background. Absence makes the heart grow fonder, they say. So after not playing for a while, you'll slowly feel that feeling of wanting to play and improve come back, and then you know that you'll be ready to tackle the game again. This is something that I've done several times. Just recently, I took a whole week break, not only from Guilty Gear, but from YouTube. I found myself getting frustrated at the game and annoyed at my own work with everything I was putting out. Every match felt like I was climbing a mountain. If I won, I just felt exhausted, and if I lost, I felt so frustrated and annoyed with myself. I was rude to several people over the course of a two-week period, and if you were someone I was rude to, and someone I said mean things to, I would like to apologize. With my videos as well, I got really sick after the who's the worst video, but still forced myself to make another video. It was nowhere near up to the quality that I would normally hold myself to, and I was annoyed at myself for forcing myself to do it. And I decided I needed a break to figure out what I wanted to do with the channel. And thankfully, it helped. Not only am I much happier with this video, but I'm excited to play Guilty Gear again after taking the holidays to relax and do literally anything else. And by literally anything else, I mean gambling my life away at the Golden Plaza on Final Fantasy XIV. The numbers just keep going up, I can't help myself. If you treat fighting games as a hobby and something to enjoy rather than an, a job and something that you need to force yourself to do, you'll find that you have a much better experience. There is a genuinely good chance that these games just aren't for you. And that's fine. But if you're into any other competitive games and you love the feeling of getting better, I seriously recommend picking up a fighting game and trying them out. The feeling of fun that you get from these games is honestly unmatched by anything else I've ever played. And there's a reason I spend so much time on them and keep coming back. So go, find the coolest looking fighting game that you can and begin your journey of self-improvement. Who knows, maybe one day you'll breach the realm of the gods and become a fighting game legend. As always, a very special thanks to 64 Megahertz, Brudakai, Daniel Wiederich, Games PNG, Lady Dantelin, Melodically Me, Monact, Enhoa, Proxy, Smeech, Super Straw Fox, and Tom Tanks for being tier two patron supporters.